Welcome to the next tutorial in the series of the Neuroscience of Learning. Uh, in this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about how sleep affects your learning and your memory, and how it's important or why it's important to get the seven, eight, seven and a half hours sleep uh, that you probably very rarely get. Uh, I have a picture here of a healthy sleep cycle. And uh, this image was retrieved from, oops, let me go back. The image was retrieved by this website. Let me pull it down here for you. Uh, and you feel free to copy it or to browse that website um, at your leisure. But what you're looking at is a typical uh, healthy sleep cycle. So you can see here we start at stage one, okay, from an awake state. We go down to stage one. And this is where, you know, we really are, our state of consciousness is now slightly altered. Uh, I call it getting into the zone. You know, you kind of know that you're not conscious, but at the same time, you're not really sleeping. During stage one sleep, if somebody calls your name, you will likely wake up. You know, you'll hear your name and you'll orient pretty quickly. Um, from stage one, we go down to stage two. And this is a slightly deeper stage. And during stage two, we see the presence of what's known as sleep spindles. And sleep spindles let us know that information that you were introduced to during the day is now being assimilated. So while you sleep, you are actually laying out memories. You are, your, your brain is assimilating what you've learned for the day. And it's basically laying it out and taking it to the right areas of the brain for processing. And when we see the sleep spindles, we know that this is beginning to happen. Uh, from stage two, you go down to stage three. And during stage three and stage four, this is the deepest sleep. And we see the presence of delta waves. And that's just letting us know that, that you're in an altered state of consciousness now. You are sound asleep. It will be very difficult to wake you up from stage three or stage four sleep. You are out. And during stage three and stage four sleep is when mother nature gets busy healing the body. So during the deep stages of sleep, stage three and stage four, your body gets healed. Like for example, you know, any, any kind of, uh, like you tore a muscle that day, all right? Tonight, you know, when you go to sleep during stage three or stage four, mother nature will really focus on healing that. Um, if you banged your knee and you have a bruise, uh, if you're fighting a cold, <laughs> You know, all of those things, um, your immune system basically gets to work during the deepest stages. So during the earlier stages, really what Mother Nature is doing is focusing on cleaning out the mind. And then during the later stages or the deeper stages of sleep, Mother Nature focuses on cleaning out the body. <coughs> now, after you go through the stages one through four, it takes about 30 minutes to get from stage one to stage four. And you only stay in stage four for about 30 minutes. Mother Nature finishes her job pretty quickly. And then you go back up through the stages, stage three, stage two, to your first REM cycle. Now during REM, REM stands for rapid eye movement. This is where we do most of our dreaming. And I mean, dreaming can occur in any stage, but the dreams that you remember are probably the dreams from REM sleep. Now it's believed that during REM sleep, Mother Nature cleans out the garbage, all right? Basically, Mother Nature is taking out the trash during REM sleep. So you need to have these periods of REM to wake up the next morning feeling refreshed and ready to learn. Your brain needs to get cleared out of the garbage from the day before so that you're ready for new information the next day. Um, and you know as well as I do, you know, if you stay up all night trying to learn anything, in fact, even trying to do like simple math equations is almost impossible because frankly, there's just too much trash. Uh, you didn't give Mother Nature the, the chance to send out the trash trucks. Uh, and when, when we are in REM, that's essentially what's happening. So this is considered one REM cycle from the awake to the first REM. After you finish this first REM, you go back down into the stages and you'll see that you hit stage four again. And you're in stage four a little bit shorter now, maybe about 20 minutes. Uh, and again, Mother Nature's working on healing the body. And then you go back up again into the lighter stages to the second REM cycle. Once again, you're dreaming uh, and Mother Nature is emptying out the trash. But you'll notice an interesting thing here happens when we get into our third REM cycle. You don't go down to stage four. As a matter of fact, as the night progresses, 
uh, you, you, your sleep is less and less deep. Uh, most of your physical healing is done within the first three or four hours of your sleeping. However, the cognitive cleanup continues to happen all night long. You are going into REM cycles all the way until seven and a half, eight hours sleep. Uh, so if you only get five or six hours sleep a night, although you might be meeting your body's physical needs, you are not meeting your mental needs. You are depriving yourself of a REM. And when that happens, Mother Nature uh, initiates what's known as a REM rebound. And that means that when you go to bed again, she's going to try to get in those missing REMs. All right, so if you only slept for four hours uh, the night before and you only got two REMs in, when you go to sleep the next night, she's going to try to cram in all the REMs that you missed in addition to the REMs that you need that night. Now, she does that at the expense of deeper sleep which means that your body doesn't heal properly. You're not letting your immune system heal your body properly because Mother Nature is trying to get in all those REMs. That puts you um, at risk for illness. You know, you get sick uh, because frankly, your immune system is not going to be able to operate. So for your brain to be properly cleaned out and for memories to be laid down, you really need a good seven and a half hours sleep a night. And I know that's difficult to do, uh, but one of the things that you can do to try to uh, try to basically reset your biological clock is to go to bed every night and wake up every morning at the same time. Try that for two weeks. Uh, I know it's difficult, but if you can get yourself motivated to go to bed at the same time every night and wake up every night, you'll set your circadian rhythm and that'll help with your sleep cycle. Uh, and as we said, we know that sleeping is, uh, sleeping is basically uh, very beneficial for memory. I mean, we know that memories are laid down when you sleep. Uh, and also, and this is just a little study tip, it's a really good idea to rehearse anything that you've learned that day just before you go to bed. Um, in 2002, there was a study done by Payne and others uh, that showed very conclusively that when you rehearse information before you go to bed, uh, you are more likely to remember it when you wake up. And you know, you, you feel like you learned it better. It's just reinforced. Uh, so that is a, an easy thing that you can do is just, you know, rehearse your, your notes from your class before you go to bed, and uh, you'll find that that reinforces the memories. Uh, one final thing I want to say uh, about sleeping is that we know that naps help learning. Uh, there was a study done by NASA, and what they found was the optimal nap time, and this may surprise some of you, is 27 minutes. So if you can take a 27 minute nap a day, if you are sleep deprived and you miss a REM, taking a 27 minute nap helps you to get that REM back without interfering with your circadian rhythm or your natural cycle. If you sleep for much longer than that though, you start to interrupt your natural biorhythms and that of course can throw off your sleep cycle. So if you are prone to napping, be sure to set your alarm uh, to wake you up in 27 minutes so that you get the most out of that nap without interfering with your natural sleep cycle. Uh, so that's going to conclude this tutorial on the neuroscience of learning. I hope you found it helpful.